Ken, I'm Jared Wassinger here with Jason Hilders. Uh, had a long Friday city commissioner treat with our uh, city commissioners. Uh, we got together at the Flint Hills Discovery Center with our five elected uh, representatives of the community and really hashed out their goals uh, for the next two years. Jason, uh, you know, we, we have two year election cycles, so this group of five uh, Mayor Reddy, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Wynn Butler, Mark Hattisall, Linda Morris, and Aaron Esterbrook are going to be our five city commissioners for the next two years, and they're going to be uh, pretty much guiding the legislative uh, agendas and topics and things that we push forward to, to approve over the next two years. So we wanted to get a feel and a sense for where they were headed. Uh, it, it was a long day, uh, for sure, Jason. We had a lot of talking, a lot of chatting. It, it was. We spent some time in the morning kind of reviewing where we had been over the last year or two. A lot of active projects, a lot of active initiatives, some outcomes from ballot questions. Uh, we were trying to get them up to speed, but also hear their input and feedback over some of the things we've been able to accomplish and some things that are still out there uh, on the radar for us to, uh, to tackle here in the, in the coming months. Yeah, we're working on finalizing what we've been calling a strategic priorities document uh, to kind of guide the city commission, city staff, and really the public over the next two years to know the priorities of the organization and the community and things that we want to accomplish. Uh, so we took a lot of time focusing on that. We're going to be uh, taking a look at all the notes that we took and really finalizing that so the city commission can kind of adopt that and we can publish that to our organization in the community and really start tracking a lot of the progress uh, that we want to achieve. We broke it down. Jason, into uh, you know five areas, strategic priorities. We talked last week about our organization excellence initiative to really address kind of the internal workings of the organization, staffing, uh, efficiencies. Uh, so that was one of them. And then we really kind of dove into our mission as an organization. We talked about the built environment uh, that the city of Manhattan is, is in charge of overseeing with streets, um, you know, multimodal transportation, uh, planning, zoning, development, uh, things like that. Safe and healthy living w was another uh, of the five strategic priority priority areas. You know, water, wastewater, sewer, fire, risk reduction. These are all the, those essential services that we're going to continue to provide the public. Uh, and then a couple others. Quality of life is a big one. Uh, the Chamber, Manhattan Area Chamber of Commerce has been talking about it with the region reimagined. And then uh, that last uh, strategic priority of the five was economic vitality. Uh, you know, we're looking at the somewhat stagnant growth of Manhattan uh, and, and looking to increase jobs, increase activities, uh, increase people into the community. So we had a lot of good discussion. That was a great document, Jared. You were a, a, a real key author in putting that together and delivering that to the, the commissioners. And obviously we'll make that available to our organization as well as the public. A lot of our conversation, along with the strategic initiatives, uh, center back in about our budget. How do you implement it? How do we take what we're doing today, evaluate it, and then look at the priorities moving forward? Um, that's a struggle. It's a struggle for anyone to get their minds around, uh, from a general fund perspective, us spending $32, $33 million, our total budget of $156 million, and just how that is broke down uh, from an operating standpoint and from a debt finance standpoint. And we try to bring commissioners along as quickly as we possibly can. <clears throat> we'll have a budget process that will start uh, here this spring and roll through the summer. And by August, uh, we have to adopt a budget for 2021. So a lot of those strategies, a lot of those initiatives, a lot of those different priorities uh, became part of the discussion as we move forward. Uh, with the governing the, body. The challenge, Jason, is a lot of those strategies, priorities, projects, programs are things that we're not doing now. Uh, so you you know, you're, you talk about our 2020 budget right now. It's hovering around $155, $156 million. Uh, that's to cover the services and the projects and the initiatives that we have been doing for quite some time, some that we started 20 years ago, some that we just started, uh, and then new projects that we've approved. The struggle and the, I guess the challenge with uh, moving forward with a, a new strategic plan or new strategic priorities initiative uh, over the next two years is balancing the stuff we do now and the stuff we want to do in the future. 
and then the needs, I guess, the wishes of the commission to keep uh, taxes similar, the same, or even reduce it. And, and that's that where we've heard from some of our commissioners. And that's where you get into a lot of the conversation about just what the mill levy supports, the difference in terms of sales tax revenues, property tax revenues, franchise fees, utilities fees, uh, just how they all intermingle within the budget, what they fund. And we're, we're pretty much in a position, a city administration, where we have about 11 and a half mills that cover our operations and our debt and a, and a mill is worth five hundred and eighty five thousand dollars so according take, to our budget take five hundred and eighty five thousand dollars times eleven point five you're going to hit right around six point seven five million dollars in property taxes that the city administration and the governing body have to wrestle with on an annual basis now there's 156 total mills in mm -hmm. your property tax statement but <clears throat> when we look at operations and debt 11.5 of the 156 mills are what city administration and the commission uh, really get to use along with all these other revenue sources to operate. Yep. So they factor into that $32 million general fund, which is really where all our people and our operations are housed. Uh, and then you got the debt side of things. Annually, we're making payments close to $26 million. Uh, out of the general fund, mill levy supported which means your property taxes um, you know we're roughly four and a half mills or, or, or four and a half times 585k so a very small portion of our debt and a small portion of our operation really comes from property taxes but that's where the conversation really centers yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna break this down one more time to simplify it because it's, it's pretty complicated um person owns a house two hundred thousand dollar house they get their property tax bill uh, sometimes once a year. You can get it twice a year, I believe. It says 100, you owe 156 mills in property taxes. I'm going to just throw out an estimate. 156 mills towards a $200,000 home be around maybe $3,000 in property taxes. That's going to three separate governmental entities. Actually, four. Uh, a small, small one mill portion of it goes to the state of Kansas. One and a half. Yep. One and a half. About a third or a little bit more goes to the UST 383 school district. About six, they're about 60 mills right 60 now. mills. Another portion of that, about a third, I think around 50 mills maybe. About 43 to the county. 43 goes to Riley County. Mm -hmm. They serve, they oversee the entire county. Then a third of that, about around... About 49 mills. About 49 mills goes to... City of so about $1,000, maybe a little bit less, goes to the city of Manhattan of that $3,000 that you're uh, paying. Break that down a little bit further within that you know, third, we're saying, that goes to the city. About two-thirds of that goes to Riley County Police Department and the library. About 60. Yep, so the city really doesn't seven. touch any of that. So then we're breaking down that, you know, that small set of property taxes that the city actually can control and can utilize to fund operations, which is people, projects, um, debt, a lot of those things. Yeah, of the 3000 you paid in taxes, roughly $300 comes to the city for us to divvy out between debt, operations, and our employees. Yeah. So that I just always try, and, and I appreciate you going there, because there's always a, a misunderstanding mm -hmm. about where your taxes go. Now we move into the side of the equation of just how many other revenues we have. We have a lot of sales tax that come in through the community. Mm -hmm. We're a regional shopping center. We have a pull factor of 1.3. 25% of our revenue comes from people that don't live here. Via sales tax. Via sales tax. And it's a real big reason why we went out for the 0.3 that failed last November, trying to give our taxpayers and our citizens the opportunity to say, you know, these future initiatives are important enough for us. Let's raise the sales tax in order for not only our locals, but people from out of town who can assist us with that debt. We're, we're moving forward. We obviously didn't get that passed. Now we're developing strategies for the commission moving forward on all six of those <clears throat> projects. But it does come back into this mill levy, sales tax, and possibly even economic development discussions. A lot of our, uh, yeah, I think we're going to jump into the economic development sales tax here in a sec. You mentioned again, and I want to kind of 
bring it home because that was uh, something that we talked to the city commissioners about uh, last week at their work session talking about the, the six projects. And really, the biggest part of the debate over the you know four months of the budget process for our city commissioners is really talking, like you said, about 11 mills out of that 156 uh, that a, a citizen or resident in Manhattan is paying in property taxes. And it, it is a big number, don't get me wrong, and it, it hits home for all of our residents and businesses that have to pay for that cost. But that's the number that, that we're working with, and I think what you talked to the city commissioners about was how we have a multi-year budget strategy to take that, that small percentage of property taxes, which, which is really the only revenue source the city commission can control outside of utility fees um, that can be increased because sales tax or sales tax are going to be, you know, uh, they've been pretty flat lately and we don't have that. Um, but have to go to the vote. You have to go to the voter to approve that. So we're looking at ways of how can we work with the, that money uh, and keep it consistent, um, n you know, nothing too drastically increasing or anything like that, but how do we look at that number and then fund the priorities that the city commission and the organization have? Yeah, and we got great presentations from our department heads a few weeks ago. The commission got a rundown of where their accomplishments were in 19, what their challenges are for 20. We'll get into 2021 challenges through the budget process and try to, you know, reach a consensus uh, on new initiatives. Uh, some of the discussion we're probably going to have in, with the governing body is looking at what we do. Are there things that they don't want to continue to do in order to free up capacity to do some other priorities that they may feel like uh, need that attention and need that revenue? That's a tough conversation to have, too, because it, uh, it, it deals with services and deals with people who... Yeah. Um, carry out those services and when you look at the 32 million like we mentioned earlier that is our general fund 20 million of that is going to be people and incrementally just growing that 20 million by two or three percent you're talking about you know anywhere from four to to four hundred thousand to six hundred thousand dollars just in increases to to give our employees that cost of living adjustment or their step or merit increase uh, those all have to be factored into that budget as we look out uh, the next year, but those are impactful numbers, 400000 to $600,000 when sales tax are flat and you're looking to really property tax is your only source if you're gonna continue to do everything and add the additional four to 600000 That's a, That's a mill just by itself. That, that $585,000 is really one one thousandth of the total valuation of the map behind us in color. It's the city's total valuation of $585 million is reduced down to 585000 because it's one one-thousandth of the value. And in Kansas, they have a very elaborate way to get to your property taxes where you take your home appraised value of $200,000 times 11.5%. Then you take it times 0.156, which is 156 mils as a one one-thousandth of a value. We need a whiteboard or something you like do. that well, to track all this. It's complicated. I, I shared a link in the comments to the property tax calculator for the residential side. There's also a commercial tax calculator too. Great. There, so that's in the comments. And, and, and they're they're out there. They're great tools. It's complicated. I understand the confusion that occurs. A lot of folks that I talk to in the community just assume all their taxes get paid to the county. Some assume a lot of their or all their taxes go to the city. So there's there is a breakdown that we try to try to do, but I think it's interesting too when you look at the map behind us and you understand that the whole community is worth five hundred eighty five million dollars. For a population of fifty six thousand people, you go into another community in Kansas with fifty six thousand people, sometimes you'll see the value almost double, and a lot of it has to do with the big purple uh, odd shape behind me that uh, is off the tax rolls. There's a lot of value there, obviously, but it's off the tax rolls. And we have a number of properties in Manhattan off the tax rolls that occupy space that traditionally you would see a lot of residential and commercial property. University, obviously a huge economic driver. Any community in the state would love to have that big purple uh, shape in the middle of their community, but it does reflect back then on our taxes and how ours are a little bit hard to compare when you look at places like Lenexa or Salina or Hutchinson 
or, or other metro area communities in, in Kansas City, Lawrence and Topeka. Topeka obviously has similar challenges, but and Lawrence as well. But it, it, it's, it's something to just have in mind and understand when you're looking at your own property yeah. taxes. So the challenge, you know, going forward, uh, talking with our city commissioners about carrying out that strate- those strategic priorities that they and the organization have, uh, there's, in my mind, I guess there's kind of three options moving forward uh, that we'll kind of need to present to the, to the city commission. Um, and that's, you know, here's all these priorities that we have that, we, you know, you and, and the organization and the community may want us to do more, which costs more. There's the, the one option of you just raise property taxes, right, to fund all those, which is difficult. And uh, you know, it, it, it affects all of our residents. There's the other option of, well, how can we make, do all those improvements and then cut services, money within the budget to accommodate it without raising property taxes? And then there's kind of this area in the middle where you just kind of keep maybe doing the status quo and you do some of it, but not all of it. So those are, it, we're going to have that, you know, juggling act and have all those conversations with the city commission, which will really start in, in May and June this summer in July uh, as we formalize our proposed 2021 budget do do you have any specifics you can share like coming out of the retreat are there priorities you want to talk about if there were cuts to be made are there things that that are kind of first on the chopping block any that kind of stuff or is that for discussion later so a lot of the feedback we get from our elected officials have to do with a much broader perspective of the community there are concerns over the, the property taxes that people are spending there are concerns over housing their concerns over economic development, renewal, and where it's headed. Had a lot of discussion on that uh, as it pertains to the county's question that currently has existed now for t- almost 20 years, a, a potential city tax that then possibly we share a portion of that with Riley County because it'll generate more revenue. Those discussions are going to come forth in the next few months. The city commission, the county commission, county administration, the Chamber of Commerce, city administration are all going to need to come together and have those discussions and see what strategy moving forward makes the most sense for everybody. That's a difficult task in itself to get the county and the chamber and the city all to agree on an approach. But I do think with our middle schools, we got the school district, the Board of Education, we got administration, that city commission and city administration all at least on the same page with a middle school approach that was successful. Uh, and we've been successful in the last two elections with the county leading the, the way with a county tax that was then shared with the city. I think we recognize an opportunity to generate nearly $6.5 million with a city tax on an annual basis in totality versus a, a $5 million Riley County tax that the city gets three and the county gets two. Well, there's a million and a half dollar difference there. And if, if we could create a tax that's city only, half cent, and we carved off $2 million for the county, which would make them whole under either scenario, the city could realize $4.5 million on an annual basis versus three. Mm-hmm. Over a 10-year period, that's $45 million versus 30. Mm-hmm. And now that can start to play into some of our six major project initiatives, Aggieville, North Campus, Runway at the airport come to mind on the updates that we just gave the commission. So, mm-hmm. you know, getting everybody to feel in agreement to where we can approach that and at least then ask the voter do you support this the current tax runs through the end of 2022 so the question really would be about implementing a tax 2023 so there's a lot of education a lot of nuances with doing it that way so we'll have to gauge the county's support gauge the chamber's support but a lot of conversation uh this past friday with the city commission how to structure that. Um, not all commissioners are, are just ready to go 100% on that strategy. There still might be a few that want to discuss the county leading as they, as they have the last two decades. So we'll have more discussion to come, but that's, that's really the opportunity around economic development. There's multiple strategies that could be followed. We'll have to see what the consensus is and, and get a question drafted uh, for this November election. That economic development sales tax will really be an important uh, conversation, and, and, and it is one of those gaps that we that could fill, uh, you know, that void in funding for 
mainly a lot of those projects that we've been talking about with Aggieville North Campus Corridor. Kind of to your question about what came of the retreat, maybe, you know, you mentioned it's something on the chopping block or what are the major priorities coming up. We didn't get into detail necessarily about cuts to any city services during the city commissioner retreat. That's a conversation moving forward. We'll need to, if we really want to see some of these priorities through, uh, we're going to need to have those conversations with departments who are, and, and this is departments who rely on the property tax revenue source. Um, so having those conversations, but there are, you know, off the top of my head there, we talked about a lot of priorities uh, that we, that are in the forefront of our minds that we're going to be ironing out some numbers for. Uh, we talked about our, our organization excellence initiative and the pay gap uh, to increasing uh, pay for, for a lot of uh, positions and employees within our organization to make them more competitive in the marketplace. That comes at an increase. So you have to either increase revenue or make cuts elsewhere. Uh, we've been talking a lot lately about our, our, you know, it's not really that sexy of a topic when, it, when you look at the city government, but our financial operating system is very uh, old. We're still on kind of a green screen, green screen form, and it makes it difficult for the organization to do a lot of the things that more progressive cities are doing when it comes to online bill paying and really moving your uh, you know, business-friendly operations to a more online platform that's easier for the citizen. That's an expensive upgrade that we you know, have kind of, you know, projects have been a little bit more important and a lot of the things that you're seeing around the community. And we're gonna need to have that debate and get a number about what it would cost to update our financial operating system. The, the bike ped systems master plan uh, that the city commission recently reviewed the draft of and they're going to be approving uh, potentially here at the next meeting. We don't have a dedicated, we, we do have a dedicated funding source in certain areas for bicycle and pedestrian projects, but not to the extent that we want to, you know, really see a lot of those capital improvements uh, happen. So those are debates that we're going to need to have and figure out balances to fund those for sure. When you hear from residents about what their priorities are, kind of back to the, the community surveys and other, what are what priorities get reported to you? We talked a lot about those six projects, a few of those six projects when it came to the flood mitigation, uh, Aggieville, uh, North Campus Corridor, that received a lot of, of public support. Uh, when you look at certain departments, uh, the biggest ones, to name a few, Public Works and, and Parks and Recreation, Streets is still a big one, maintaining our streets and thoroughfares and making sure it's easy to get around town. Uh, and that could be multiple ways. Um, you know, one of the major priorities from our 2019 community surveys that, that really crept up that I was surprised about was a bicycle friendly community. It was actually more of a priority of our respondents than snow removal. Uh, so, you know, you take that balance about what do we want to see? Uh, obviously, we're not going to just stop removing snow, but you need to start looking at some of those areas if you really want to start making headway on s some others. Parks and recreation, uh, the top priorities was quality of parks and trails and recreation programs. We do a lot of other things in our parks and recreation department that are outside of that general parks, trails, recreation facilities scope uh, that we've been doing for quite some time that, that can be evaluated. So there's there's quite a few. We have a lot of great people providing a lot of services throughout the community, yeah. and, and these some of these conversations are going to be difficult because they'll impact what they do and how they do it within the community and the organization. There's obviously approaches that um, involve more of an evaluation of what we do and how we do it. There's obviously some needs that we have to embrace um, our financial um, operating system, as Jared mentioned, our human resources and our legal staff have, have really haven't grown a whole lot in the last five to ten years. The phenomenon that we wrestle with in Manhattan for a long time, sales tax, for keeping up at a pace that could help offset uh, any type of discussion on property taxes. We've been flat in sales tax for four years now, and our mill levy has also been fairly flat when it comes to what's approved. We've put some things off we've had to do uh, without in certain areas, and it's, it's just reaching a point internally where that discussion is going to become hopefully more strategic as we move forward with the city commission in discussing future budgets. Uh, won't be easy decisions. There's going to be some, some emotional 
reactions. Uh, but I do think at, at, by the time we're complete with the process, a 2021, a 2022 budget process, um, we'll have a better sense of the direction the community's headed. Well, and this kind of helps make the case for shopping local and investing in your community because it shows sure. up in stormwater improvements and street improvements and other areas like that as well. Yeah. Next week, we're, we're going to wrap up next week. Jason, I think we have a work session talking about some 12th Street designs uh, in Aggieville. 12th Street between uh, Bluemont and Morrow Street, kind of between Tanners and uh, Lucha and so along. It's got some cool design concepts that uh, folks can digest. And I think at that work session, we're really going to get feedback from the city commission to uh, move towards a more f firm final concept so that our consultants can really refine that and then we can start moving on construction possibly this summer yeah because uh, really. they're building that hotel and, yeah. and, and i know they need a water line to it that they need to uh, replace so we're going to be tearing up that street here pretty soon so we need to finalize that um, and then just a plug for uh, tonight or tomorrow's uh, city commission meeting we only have one item on the general agenda it's a discussion item but it's a to go out for an rfp uh, request for proposals to hire a consultant to do a housing market analysis study that was something that was approved by our city commission uh, during the 2020 budget process. So we're going to get some feedback on really the scope of what that project could entail, getting an understanding of the market. We, we hear a lot about affordable housing, suitable housing, um, you know, creating a quality of place for mul multiple different types of people to live in this community. So that'll be a good opportunity uh, if you're interested to tune in or come in and provide feedback. Have a great week.